guys. Sorry for the late start. Little technical difficulties in the tiny house here. Welcome to Ashtanga Fusion. And I'm just gonna check in occasionally here and just see um, how you guys are doing, see if you're dropping any comments in the box as far as postures, alignment. Um, doing this Facebook Live yoga is so different because we, in studio and in person, we can reach over and make adjustments and things like that. So this is a very different situation for so many yoga instructors as we do this live streaming thing. So um, thank you so much in advance for your patience and your willingness to see through this new journey of live streaming and Facebook Live stuff that so many of us are not super familiar with live streaming and all the technical things behind it. So um, having your patience um, through this process and also coming and showing up for practice is so awesome. So thank you for coming. Um, my name's Holly. I'm one of the regular instructors at Canopy in the Roots and today I'm instructing Ashtanga Fusion, our live streaming Friday morning class. This is a regularly scheduled class that we have at the studio when we're open and have students in studio. We offer Ashtanga Fusion every Friday morning. And um, so far the class has, we opened February 4th as a business. And so far um, our yoga has been really great. Um, we are also hashtag Dalanaga Yoga. And, um, and uh, this class in particular has always been a 10 a.m. class in the studio since we opened. And I think that once we are having live students in the studio, uh, live students, having live classes with students in the studio, we probably will make this class an earlier morning class. Um, so this is a great trial run for these early morning times. And um, anyway, this is all a side note. Um, I wanted to share a little bit of information about Ashtanga. So the traditional practice of Ashtanga is developed by a person um, and it consists of a certain order and sequencing of asana or movement coupled with pranayama which is the breath and drishti which is your spot that you gaze during practice. So uh, the reason I call this fusion is because it's not um, strictly sticking to the particular sequencing and those specific postures of Ashtanga, but the practice of Ashtanga is one of athleticism, it's one of sweat and hard work, um, and really deepening into your strengthening and your stretching and your asana, your practice. So it's, um, for me, Ashtanga, I'm passionate about the practice of Ashtanga and the coupling with vinyasa because um, I believe that yoga is one of those few athletic exercises that can kind of meet body, mind, and spirit. And I was a collegiate athlete, I went to school on a swimming scholarship, and so for me, once I got out of the athletic competition, I found so much, um, so much strength and growth in yoga personally. Um, it transformed my body from the big bulky muscles that I had as a swimmer to leaning, leaning my muscles down, um, but not detracting from the strength, if that makes sense. So um, I wanna encourage you guys during this practice that if there are postures that you feel like you can't do, just know that your body is obviously different than anybody else's body. And um, a few years ago, I was diagnosed with scoliosis and um, it's fairly severe in regard to its degree of curvature and twist. So there are some postures for me that are more challenging than they would be for someone who doesn't have that curvature and, and uh, rotation of the spine. Um, but the thing is, is that as we lengthen our muscles, as we strengthen our muscles, we can um, grow a greater and a stronger foundation and support in our spinal structure, in our spinal column, when we strengthen those muscles around the spine, those muscles start to hug the bones and the vertebrae and provide support, not only for the nervous system, but also provide support and strengthening for the spine. And that decreases back pain, helps us sleep better, um, and obviously provides lubrication and movement to our, our bones and our joints. 
Um, we also like to talk about fascia, which is the head to toe. Um, all over our, body, our bodies we have fascia. So as we move through postures in yoga, we're all actually also working on moving the breath through the fascia and finding a reawakening in our systems that way as well. So, um, so Ashtanga typically will incorporate um, some inversions or arm balancing. Um, I will provide modica modifications throughout the practice so that if there's a posture in particular that you think, yes, I'd love to get there where I can balance my leg on my arm and put the other leg out in the air and do all this stuff, but just on your body where it is today because what you did yesterday, may be, you may be able to go further today or not as far. And so we just need to practice just like we do in life, giving ourselves grace and um, I'm giving others grace too. So um, again, my name is Holly. Thanks for joining me for live, our Facebook Live Takeover. And we are doing this for six weeks through the middle of June. Um, instructors from all over the country are contributing to um, Canopy in the Roots to keep our yoga studio alive and thriving and to give you guys at home an opportunity to experience yoga, different styles, different instructors, and different voices through the practice, as well as just being able to give yourself a chance to have a yoga practice outside of a studio and outside of maybe the um, expectations. Maybe you walk into a studio and you worry about what everybody else is doing and don't worry about what everybody else is doing because everybody's worried about what they're doing. Um, and that's exactly what we do in the, in the internal practice of yoga is that we take all that focus and we bring it into the midline and into the heart and we work from there. So again, thank you for joining me. Um, I'm coming at you from our tiny house here in North Georgia. And I'm just going to check in with the screen and then we'll get started with the practice. Hey guys, thanks for joining me. Um, and um, again, inversions, arm balances, don't feel like you have to do them. If for some reason you have any trouble hearing me, please, by all means, just drop it in the box and hopefully I'll see it. Um, questions, you can message me. So let's start our practice. So from wherever you are, you're going to find your space on the mat. We're going to start from a standing posture, starting at the top of your mat. Drawing the eyes to a close, resting the palms at your sides. Closing the eyes helps take away the visual stimulation of what is happening. Sinking back onto your heels and lifting through the toes, bringing awareness to your breath allowing the belly to rise and fall, and the breath to travel, not just into the chest, but into the belly, so you feel a rise, and a fall of the breath, but never a closing in, never a rounding of the spine, drawing the shoulders down and back, pressing the toes, pinky toe all the way into the big toe, really finding your grounding in the mat as you experience the sensation of heel to toe. Maybe you just move within this space from heel to toe, checking in with the soles of the feet. And how interesting that we have nerves and muscles and cells and tissues that go all the way from the soles of our feet to the crown of our head, all the way reaching from the bottom of our feet all the way to the top of our head. And they're all connected to our organs and how we can breathe into those spaces and experience a lightness of freedom and a healing just by breathing in and being aware of them, this consciousness. Feel 
here in this space as you press down and root down through the toes, finding the four corners of your feet, drawing the breath in as the belly comes into the spine, the shoulders drawing down and back, lifting slightly through the chin. On your next inhale, keeping the eyes closed, draw those hands all the way up above the head. Palms come to touch, fingertips touch, keeping the shoulders down and away from the ears. Exhale those hands all the way through heart center. Setting your intention your reason for coming to the mat this morning. Maybe it's strength. Maybe it's breath, peace. Setting that intention, coming back to that intention throughout our practice brings us back to this rooted foundation where we started. Fluttering the eyes open, finding a spot to gaze just in front of your mat, keeping the eyes relaxed, releasing any clenching and tension from the jaw. As we inhale, send those fingertips all the way up to the sky, stretching through the elbows, keeping shoulders away from the ears and interlacing the fingertips, pointing the index fingers to the sky. Press their sit bones back, drawing the belly in towards the spine. Keeping the chin in this neutral position. As we exhale, drawing the fingertips over to the right, maybe bending through the right elbow. Turning the chin into that top arm and opening up through the side body here. Inhale, brings that back to center. And as we exhale, arcing over for our standing moon pose to the left, opening up through that right side body and turning the chin. Really press that heart forward, roll the shoulder open. And inhale, bring that back to center. Taking a few TikToks on your own. As you inhale, reaches up at center, keeping those shoulders away from the ears, no shrugging. Exhale, taking it over to the right, and inhale it back to center. Working through these TikToks nice and slow, opening up the side body, opening up the rib cage, preparing our shoulders. Exhale. Just flowing through this space on your own breath as you move through these TikToks. Let's just get maybe five more, six more breaths as we exhale. And as we go right, we want to do the opposite side as well. So everything we do on the right side, we'll do on the left. Hey, Erin. <laughs> Love you, girl. Coming back to center. As we exhale our hands through heart center, Coming back to that intention. As we inhale, rise those fingertips up to the sky, sending those palms out to the sides. We swan dive down nice and slow. Flat back, drawing that belly in towards the spine, pressing the hips back as we inwardly rotate those knees. And stop halfway here. This is our first forward fold in the practice, and since it's early, I just want to take it nice and slow. Inhale here. This is where our halfway lift lies. So just place your fingertips in between the ankles and the knees, somewhere on those shin bones, keeping your gaze neutral. We're going to pause here at this halfway lift. Pay attention to what your knees are doing and bring those knees in towards the midline as the hip bones press out 
drawing that belly in towards the spine, protecting all of our trunk and our lower back as we exhale, drawing ourselves into our first forward fold. It's okay to bend your knees. It's okay to pedal through this if you bend through your right knee and left knee. It's okay to find fluidity in this motion. We don't have to pop from one structure to another in yoga. It's all about the breath and moving with the breath so that the breath informs the muscles and we can move with less stiffness. We aren't the tin men and women. We're flesh and blood. And so we'll move with the fluidity of flesh and blood. Bending through the knees, maybe placing the palms or fingertips on the mat, maybe just shake, gently shaking tension loose from the neck. Inhale to that halfway lift. Remember, drawing those knees into the midline, protecting that lower back. Exhale, those fingertips come all the way down to the mat, spreading the fingertips wide, bringing them up towards the top of the mat as you walk those feet back to the back of your mat. Sinking the heels, if you're able, all the way to the mat. And exhale as that chin draws gently in towards the chest, downward facing dog. Full breath, inhale. From our downward facing dog, taking your gaze up between the hands, melting the knees to the mat, and bringing the tops of the feet to the mat. Along with those knees, finding our tabletop here. Inhale, drawing the chin upwards and the belly down towards the mat, finding our cow. Exhale, rounding the spine, bending through the elbows, cat. Flowing through cat and cow on your own breath here. Inhale, brings you up for that cow. Exhale, rounds the spine into cat. Flowing through with the breath. Inhaling up cow. Exhaling cat. Maybe you even lift onto those fingertips for cat. I love it. And... Inhale, cow. Those elbows are straight. Exhale, cat. Inhale, cow. Staying with our flow. Staying with our breath. Awakening the spine. Two more breaths. Inhaling for cow. Exhale as we round the spine. Cat. Inhale, cow. Exhale, rounding the spine, cat, pressing through the tops of the feet in our tabletop. Separate the knees a mat width apart and sit the hips back on the heels. Inhale, walk those hands forward to the top of the mat, reaching through the fingertips, stretching through the shoulders and the elbows, maybe even walking the fingertips, patting them up like you're a cat, just patting and kneading the dough, moving it up towards the top of the mat. And as you exhale, you're going to release the elbows, release the shoulders, release the forehead to the mat. Inhale here at center and walk the hands over to the right side of the mat. On an exhale, stack that left hand on top of right, keeping those sit bones rooted to the heels. Stacking that left hand on top of right will open up that left side body in this child's pose, turning the chin, being gentle with ourselves. As we inhale, walk those hands to the center of the mat and take them over to the left side. The exhale stacks the right hand on top of left. And inhale, walk those hands back to the center. Exhale, releasing back into that 
child's pose, just rocking into the right hip crease, left hip crease. As we stay awake and we stay alert, inhale, rise all the way up, turning those knees back to that tabletop, spreading the fingertips wide, finding our tabletop, inhale, up cow, exhale, cat. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. And in this rounded spine, bring those toes into the mat as we press the toes into the mat, lifting the knees on an inhale, staying on the toes, inhale all the way up onto those toes like tiny dancers, staying on the toes, Full breath, inhale, exhale into that downward facing dog. We're still warming up here. You may feel like, man, yoga is a slow thing. Yes, <laughs> slow control, that's true. But Ashtanga, we'll get our heart rates going here. Walking out your dog, staying with your breath. Shaking your head no, releasing any tension from the neck. And on your next inhale, finding stillness in that downward facing dog. Pressing the heels down towards the mat. Finding that lengthening all the way through the back body and hamstrings as you release the tension from the neck. Allow that chin to come towards the chest. Inhale to walk those hands all the way back to meet the feet at the back of our mats. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. And round all the way up. One vertebrae at a time. Chin coming up last, rounding those shoulders down and back. Palms at your sides, mountain pose. Full breath. And so from here, we're going to slowly work into our breath. Working into our workout. Those palms at your sides, you found mountain pose. At the back of your mats. Inhale, those fingertips all the way up above the head. Palms and fingertips come to touch. And with a flat back, exhale, those hands through heart center. Bringing them all the way down to the mat for our forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, planting the hands. Walking them all the way to the top of our mats and finding plank. Spreading those fingertips wide. Pressing those heels to the wall behind you. Shoulders over elbows over wrists. Just finding that alignment as the belly draws in towards the spine. Protecting the lower back. And from this space here in plank, inhale, lift that right foot off of the mat. Keeping the foot dorsal flex, the right toes point down, the hips are square. Exhale, set it down. Inhale, up left foot, breathing into the space, and set it down. Well, our little TikToks here, inhale, up that right foot, and exhale, set it down. Inhale, up left foot, and set it down. One more right, inhale. And exhale, set it down. Inhale, left. And set it down. Inhale here in your plank. And exhale, squeezing those elbows into the rib cage as we lower all the way down onto the chest. From this position, inhale, tops of the feet come to the mat. And just inhale up. For our cobra, baby cobra, or you can go straight forward for it with an upward facing dog, maybe lifting the thighs or not. Taking your gaze all the way up to the sky, 
And from wherever you are, if you're in your baby or your cobra, bring those toes back to press the mat. As we challenge ourselves, inhale all the way up to plank. Little push up there, exhale, downward facing dog. Full breath, inhale, exhale. Picking it up just a little more as we inhale, rounding the spine to find our plank. Inhale up that right foot and set it down. Inhale up left foot and set it down. Again, right and left. Inhaling up and exhaling down. Exhale, squeezing those elbows and the ribs, lowering down. Inhale, upward facing cobra or baby. Exhale, downward facing dog. Walking it out. Inhale, rounding ourselves to plank. One more time here as we lift that right foot and set it down. Inhale, left, and set it down. Right. Left. And exhale, squeezing the elbows, lowering down. Inhale, child's pose. Cobra or baby cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Breathing here as you walk out your dog, bending through the right and left knee, speaking to those hips. The psoas, walking it out. You might find your breath is quickening. I know mine is working in to this. And from our downward facing dog, inhale, take that gaze up between the hands, melt the knees to the mat, tabletop. Finding your alignment for that tabletop as we inhale up, cow. Exhale, cat. Inhale, one more cow. Exhale, one more cat. Neutral tabletop on the inhale, bringing that left palm to the center of the mat. We're going to thread the needle, so we inhale up those right fingertips. Give them a little wiggle, wake them up. And exhale, thread the needle, bringing that right hand underneath left arm and set that right shoulder down on the mat. Releasing tension also from the head as you bring that right temple to the mat. Inhale up left, fingertips, and exhale. As you bend the elbow behind the small of the back, maybe the left hand comes inside of that right thigh. Inhale, bring those left fingertips up. And coming out of this on the unwind as we plant that left palm and rise all the way back to our tabletop. Finding our cow and cat. Inhale up, cow. Exhale, cat. Inhale, neutral tabletop as that right hand comes to the center. And inhale up, left fingertips. Give them a wiggle. Straighten through that right elbow. And exhale. Lowering down onto that left shoulder as we inhale up, right fingertips. And bending the elbow, taking them behind the back. Resting that left temple on the mat. Thread the needle seems so simple and so often in our practice. I notice that, myself included, that sometimes I can put tension in my neck just by lifting my temple off of the mat. Just by like, oh, what am I doing back here? And just releasing that temple to the mat really allows your shoulders to surrender into the stretch. Inhale as we unwind. Planting that right palm back to the mat as we rise up to that tabletop. Finding our cow. Exhale, cat. Inhale, neutral tabletop. 
Anchoring those toes into the mat as we inhale up, knees, and exhale, downward facing dog, walking it out. You don't need my instruction. When it comes to the downward facing dog, just work into your body. Allow your body to speak to you right where it is today. You might be in downward facing dog and feel like, man, my hips are really tight and sore. Let me just bend through my knees. That feels so much better. Do it. Do it. You don't have to wait for an instructor to cue you. You can take what your body needs. Planting through that left foot. We're going to inhale up that right foot as I kick the wall. And move forward just a little. <laughs> Tidy house yoga props, right? Put that right toe down to the mat. What this does is square the hips. It's not about the height in our legs. Square the hips in that three-legged dog. Square the shoulders in your three-legged dog. You should feel this through your left hamstring before we bend through that right knee and stack the hips, opening the hips. Maybe bringing that right heel into the glute, squaring the shoulders and drawing some figure eights with that knee. And from this space, Inhale, straighten through that right knee, coming back to our three-legged dog. And exhale, bending the knee, bringing that right foot all the way through the hands and planting it down for our high lunge as we inhale, rise all the way up. Drawing that belly in towards the spine. Now, just check in with that. We don't want to over extend on that knee so you should be able to look down and see your right toes in front of your knee inhale those fingertips all the way up and exhale swan diving down frame that right foot step it all the way back to that three-legged dog keeping that right leg lifted give yourself an extra challenge as we inhale three-legged plank breathe here and exhale, lower down to that cobra, or inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog, rooting down through that right foot. As we inhale up, left foot, same thing, opposite side. Sink that right heel down into the mat. Square those hips, square those shoulders. Exhale, bend through that knee, open through the hips, stacking the hips, left heel into the glute, circling through that knee, drawing those figure eights. And inhale, open up through that hip before we straighten the knee, finding that three-legged dog one more time. Exhale, bend through the knee. And send that left foot through the hands, planting it down, inhale, belly draws in as we rise all the way up, high lunge. Full breath here, exhale, swan, diving down, frame that left foot, sending it all the way up and back, three-legged dog. Remember our three-legged plank. We're going to go there. Inhale, three-legged plank, keeping that left foot lifted. Exhale, squeezing the ribs lower down. Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Walking it out. Now inhale, look up between the hands. And we're going to bend through the knee, step, hop, or float to the outside edges of that pinky finger. It's bringing it up, bringing those feet to the outside edges of those pinky toes. Sink those heels, turn those toes out, and find our yogi squat here. Now, let your body meet you where it is today. So, some of you guys... Maybe about here, here. Just play with where your body is. The important thing is drawing the shoulder blades down and back, keeping that spinal structure straight and aligned. And as we are in this squat, move into those hip creases, 
swaying into that space. Full breath, inhale here. Plant that left hand down at center and inhale up right fingertips. Finding a stretch in this squat as we exhale, that right palm will come down and the left palm will lift. Exhale, plant that left palm. Turn those toes to the top of the mat and straighten the knees on an exhale for a wider forward fold. Bring those hands inside the elbow creases as we sway. Nice job. See, Ed Sheeran says he's in love with your body. Isn't that great? We all want Ed Sheeran to love our bodies. Sway here. Releasing the palms to the mat. And roll all the way up. One vertebrae at a time. Rolling the shoulders down and back. Woo! Grab water anytime you need it. Warming it up. You guys should feel pretty good. And from this space, let's come all the way here. So from our standing posture, let's find the top of our mouth. Inhale. There's fingertips all the way up. Exhale, flat back, forward fold. Bringing those toes together if you haven't already. It's fine if they're apart. Inhale, halfway lift. Flat back, shoulders draw down and back. Exhale, plant those palms. Step, hop, or float it back to your downward facing dog. And walk it out. Keeping it moving here, guys, as we plant that left foot. And inhale, up right foot, three-legged dog. Exhale, bend through that knee. Circle through the knee. Figure eights. Inhale, straighten through that knee, bringing it back to that three-legged dog, pointing those right toes down to the mat, squaring the hips, and exhale as we bend that knee and bring it all the way through the hands. Again, rising up, high lunge, inhale. Full breath. Exhale, those hands through heart center, and from our high lunge here, it gets fun. <laughs> You're already having fun, right? Inhale. Taking that back heel and just realizing that we have a little propulsion here. As we press through those right toes, we're going to inhale and step it up, preparing for a warrior three. As we hinge at the hip, it's not about a height in the hip, in the leg or the hips. Those left toes point down, we find our warrior three. You can leave your hands at heart center. Or you can bring those arms out like wings and fly. Draw that belly in, squaring the hips. That wall, that wall is like a magnet for me right now. Inhale, bend through that left knee and draw it all the way up to your chest. Or bringing it up in the direction of your chest, not actually on your chest. Inhaling here. Now crossing left over right and right under left. Draw that breath in, lift through those elbows, squeeze through the forearms. And exhale to sink into your eagle pose. Breathing here, finding that midline as you lift through the elbows. If you can wrap the calf with that foot, great. If you'd like to use it as a kickstand, you can bring those left toes to the mat. From wherever you are in eagle pose, inhale all the way up. Unwinding only the left leg as we step it back to that high lunge. 
Walk that right foot over to the right edge of the mat. Giving yourself a little space as we inhale. Lift through the elbows. And exhale those elbows inside the right knee. Maybe those back toes turn out. Making space for this hip. Making space for your breath. Full breath, guys. Breathing into the space. Now, drawing the belly in towards the spine, lifting through the elbows, awaken from those eagle arms as we unwind and exhale, open up, second warrior, those back toes are turned out, those right toes face the top of the mat, your gaze over those right fingertips, second warrior here. Sweeping that left hand underneath the right, turn those back toes to the top of the mat, high lunge. And exhale, swan diving down, framing that right foot as we send it all the way up and back. Three-legged dog. Inhale, three-legged plank. From this three-legged plank, we're going to press through that left hand and stack the right foot on top of left or keep it lifted. This is like a balance or a challenge if you don't want to take this side angle with both knees lifted you can just drop that left knee to the mat and keep the inside edge of that right foot to the mat as you open up through the right hand or stacking the right foot on top of left or lifting through that right foot or bending through the knee Wrapping that big toe with index finger and thumb. Play in this space in this side plank. Lift through the hips. And exhale, brings that right palm back. Coming back to those toes as we press through. Chaturanga, exhale, lower down. And inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale. Downward facing dog, walking it out. Full breath. Spread those fingertips wide. Ready for the opposite side as we anchor down through that right foot and inhale up left foot. Exhale, open the hip. Bend through that knee. Figure eights. Opening through the hip. And inhale, straightening through that left knee. Taking your gaze between the hands as we bring that left foot all the way through the hands. And rise up, high lunge. Full breath. I'm going to just scoot myself back a little bit. I know my head's going to come towards that staircase and I'm not going to get a full warrior three. Inhale in that high lunge. Exhale those hands through heart center. And when you're ready, shifting your weight into that left foot, pressing through the toes, we're going to step it up onto that left foot, hinging at the hip, finding our warrior three as the right toes point down. Arms come out like wings or remain at heart center. Full breath. Drawing that belly in towards the spine and bending through the knee, swooping that right knee up and forward. Bring those hands up above the head. Crossing right ankle, right knee over left, left arm under right, 
Inhale, lift through those elbows, squeeze through the triceps and forearms as we exhale into that eagle pose. Breathing into the space, guys. From our eagle pose, inhale, unwinding only the leg. Step that right foot all the way back, finding that high lunge. As we move that left foot over to the left edge of the mat, maybe even dropping that right heel, turning those back toes out. Inhale, lift through the elbows, and exhale those elbows inside of the left knee. Wall. You can laugh. 
Oh, inhale, draw that belly in towards the spine and rise all the way up to your Katasana, our chair pose. Exhale, those hands through heart center or from those arms out for cactus. Sinking back onto the heels and lifting the toes, shift your weight in chair. Draw that belly in towards the spine. And remaining calm here. Chair pose is a burn. It's supposed to be a burn. Bring everything towards the midline as you're lifting through those toes, shifting back onto the heels. Draw those knees in towards the midline. Press the heart forward. The shoulder blades come down and back. Hands are at heart center. Cactus arms. You can lift them all the way up. Although this puts a lot of tension on people's shoulders. And so if you have shoulder injuries, or even if you don't, you might just want to keep your hands at heart center or cactus arms. We're going to be here a minute. Inhale. Don't give up because you're at home. When this starts to burn, come back to your intention. What did you set your intention on when you started this practice? Strength, peace. We know we can experience that in the middle of a storm, whether it's a pandemic or chair pose. The music stops, I can hear myself breathe. Inhale here in your chair pose. And exhale, takes your twist over to the left, right elbow, outside left knee. And if it's available to you, open it up. Send those right fingers down and left fingers up. Staying in your chair pose. Full breath here. Breathing into the space. Now this is that place where if you'd like to take it one more step from this side chair twist, you can bring it into a side crow. By bringing those hands down and planting the palms outside of that left thigh, all you're gonna do, spread the fingers wide, create a shelf in your triceps. So your triceps are going to be supporting that hip, that left hip as you move the heart forward. That tricep creates the shelf for the left hip. If you notice, when I hinge forward, those feet come off. So if you're in a side crow, you can play. I know you guys are feeling it. Stay in your breath from your side crow or your side chair. We're gonna come out of it the way we went in by inhaling first to blossom those arms and then bring it back to center. Still feeling our lungs. Exhale, center chair. Don't think about the cool down yet. Think about it right now, your intention. Inhale here at center. And exhale over to the right, left elbow outside of that right knee and blossom the arms. Planting those palms. If you're gonna try that side crow, opposite side, or stay in that side chair twist. Give yourself time to adjust into that space, whatever you're trying. Whatever you're doing, take the time. There's no need to rush. Coming out of wherever you were, the way you went in, blossoming open the arms. And inhale, bring it back to center chair. Exhale, sink. Staying in our chair. Inhale, rise all the way up. 
dropping the palms to your sides, shaking it out on an inhale. Oh. How are you guys feeling? Good? Hopefully. You feeling sweaty like me? <laughs> oh. Inhale, bring those hands all the way up above the head. Exhale, flat back, forward fold, we're somewhere near the top of our mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant those palms. Step hop or flip back to your downward facing dog. Just walking it out. Inhale, look up between those hands. Melt the knees to the mat, finding your tabletop. Pressing through the tops of the feet and separate the knees and sit it back, child's pose. A little recovery here. Maybe you stretch through the shoulders to walk those hands up. Exhale to bend through the elbows and reverse prayer behind the head. Inhale, bring those palms back to the mat. Rising up from our tabletop, turning, or from our child's pose, turn those knees back to the tabletop, pressing through the toes. Inhale, up knees, and exhale, downward facing dog. Walking it out, shaking the head, loose any tension from the neck. Pedaling, bending through right and left knee. Pedaling it out. And from our downward facing dog, we're going to inhale and bring ourselves to plank. Really finding some strength here, guys. In this plank, as we draw that belly in towards the spine, thrust through those toes and those heels back to the wall behind you. And from our plank, we're going to inhale up that right foot and exhale to bend the knee and draw the knee to the nose as we round the spine. And inhale, send it back. Exhale, knee to nose. And inhale it back. Exhale. Inhale, back. One more exhale. Inhale. Keeping that right foot lifted. Exhale, downward facing dog, three-legged. Exhale, bend through the knee. Bring that right heel into the glute. And if you'd like to, you can circle. Draw some figure eights with that knee if you're feeling it. Or... With that open hip, you can just bring that right foot all the way down to the floor, flipping your dog with nice, slow control, sending those hips up to the sky. Opening here. Unwinding the same way we went in, drawing with slow control that right hand back to the mat. Three-legged dog. Now, Inhale, three-legged dog, and exhale that knee to nose. And inhale it up. Exhale, knee to left elbow. And inhale it up. Exhale, knee to right elbow, and hold it. Drop it down two, three inches between the wrist and elbow. And inhale it up to the tricep. Drop it down. And inhale it up. Drop it down. And inhale it up. One more. Drop it down. And inhale it up. Exhale. Three-legged dog. Inhale. Three-legged plank. Chaturanga. 
Exhale it down. Upward facing dog on an inhale. Exhale. Downward facing dog. Walking it out. One more here. Inhale, plank. Really press through that index finger and thumb, otherwise known as the L shape, to protect those wrists. And from this plank, inhale up left foot and exhale, knee to nose. And inhale back. Three more, exhale. Inhale back, exhale. And let's do one more to grow on. Inhale, exhale. Inhale all the way up, three-legged dog. Exhale. Staying with the breath. Inhale. Exhale, knee to nose. And inhale it up. Exhale, knee to right elbow. And inhale it up. Exhale, knee to left elbow. And freeze. Drop it down three inches. And inhale it up to tricep. Exhale it down to forearm. Inhale it up to tricep. Two more. Forearm. Tricep. Forearm, tricep, and ooh, inhale it all the way up. Three-legged dog. Inhale, three-legged plank, chaturanga. Lowering down, inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Walking it out. Inhale. Take that gaze all the way up between the hands. Bending through the knees. And we're stepping, hopping, or floating. Up between our hands at the top of our mats. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fall. Staying in our forward fold as we turn our hands inside the elbow creases in our forward fold and sway. Ragdoll it. We're going to be moving our way down to the mat. Pulling ourselves down, bring that heart rate back. From our rag doll, filling your lungs, breathing in as the heart presses forward. And exhale into stillness in that forward fall. Just a few seconds here. And on your next exhale, bend through the knees, sinking the hips down towards the heels. And when you're ready, sitting down on to the butt. Inhale, those feet all the way up to a high boat pose. I'm gonna work through some abdominals, some abbeys today in our high lunge. Really activate through the fingertips, reaching towards those toes. Pressing that heart forward, drawing the shoulders down and back. Finding a straight posture here, no slump into this. Now you can modify this by placing your palms, fingertips face towards the hips, and hinging from here. You can use the palms on the outsides of the thighs to modify this way or you can activate through those fingertips and keep this high boat pose shape this way, reaching towards the toes. So pick your 
posture. And we're gonna flow through a low boat and high boat. Just pulsing here, staying with our breath. Two, and one. Inhale up high boat. Cross those ankles and draw those knees in towards the chest. Giving them a hug. And rock and rolling on to the back. As you rest each vertebrae on the mat, inhale to straighten through the knees and bring those legs all the way up the wall. And crossing the ankles, flexing through the feet, Stamping the feet on the ceiling, releasing the shoulders, maybe resting palms up. This is an active posture. You're pressing those thighs to the wall behind you, straightening through the knees, flexing through the ankles. Nothing about this posture is relaxed, for lack of better words. You're activated in your whole body, except for maybe those palms. What we want to avoid is just clawing down and pressing into the earth here. We just want to surrender the hips and yet press. Inhale, lift those hips and place the palms under the hips on a nice slow count. We're going to bring those legs to a three inch hover above the floor. So we're just going to go nice and slow, like a 10 Mississippi. Or an eight Mississippi. And three, two, one. Hover those legs. And we're going to pulse, bring those legs up three inches and back to the hover. Staying with our breath. No holding the breath. Just pulsing here. Protecting that lower back with the palms pressing beneath the hips. Squeeze those knees. Squeeze the hips, squeeze the glutes, bring everything into the midline here. And from this, inhale and hover with stillness. And bring those legs ooh, all the way up the wall. Mm. Exhale, bend through those knees. Bring the soles of the feet down, release the palms from under the hips. And just windshield wiper those knees. Now we're going to combine a reclined half pigeon with a little bit of a twist so that we kind of get a posture that does double duty here or even triple duty. So after you windshield wiper those knees right and left, equal size, bring those knees back to center, keeping the soles planted for now. As we inhale, we're gonna lift that right foot and stack the right ankle on top of the left knee. Feel the sensation of allowing your knee to fall open. There should be no tension in that right hip or that right knee. Just allow it to hang. Now play with the position of your right ankle, either closer in to the hip crease or further and closer to the knee, the left knee. We'll kind of determine how deep of a stretch that your body is allowing you to get here in this half pigeon today. So inhale to lift that left sole of the foot off of the mat, interlace the fingers behind that left thigh between, you're gonna reach between the thighs with the right hand and take that left hand interlacing it with the right fingers behind that left thigh. Play with the placement of the ankle. As we inhale, press that heart forward and exhale, 
to gently pull that left knee towards the chest, still staying relaxed through that right hip. Again, playing with the position of that right foot. Maybe you move it closer to the knee or deeper into the hip crease. Maybe that foot flexes slightly towards the leg and you can just wrap the foot around that left thigh. Just play with it here. The important thing is allowing that right hip to open, so just releasing tension from the hip. We're gonna be here for at least five breaths. So allow yourself to breathe deeply into this. If we were in class, I make an adjustment where I I come I come here near your left leg and I'll straighten your left leg slightly. And then I'll bring the left your left foot into the top of a thigh and I will actually help press that left knee in towards the chest. If we're in a class, we'll keep those hips anchored and I'll just be flexing that left foot into a thigh. So all of these little adjustments are such an advantage to coming to a live yoga class versus doing it online. Doing and performing a posture and asana correctly is so vitally important to your safety and your health. That's why instructors talk so much. <laughs> they want to make sure that you're safe. Last inhale here, unwinding the legs, uncrossing the ankle, bring those legs all the way up the wall, straightening through the knees, one more time, flexing through the feet, finding that legs up the wall posture one more time, straighten through the knees, really press those hamstrings back to the wall, breathing here, and exhale, bending through those knees, Maybe you bring both soles to the mat, or maybe you just go ahead and cross that left ankle over right. We're doing this reclined pigeon on the opposite side. Inhale, reach through that gap, interlace the fingers around that right thigh, and exhale to draw the right knee in towards the chest. neck neutral and on the floor on your mat three solid breaths left stretching into the space this reclined half pigeon and we're going to come in on the opposite side one more time after we're done with this left side Inhale, those legs all the way back up the wall. Same thing, right side, cross that right ankle over that left knee. Inhale to reach between the space, interlacing the fingertips around the left thigh. We're coming back to that first side with this reclined half pigeon one more time as we exhale to hug the left knee towards the chest. Now, stay with me here as we inhale Release the left thigh, keeping that right ankle crossed over left. Bring the left sole of the foot down to the mat. Bring those arms out like wings. Pressing the heart forward on an inhale. And on an exhale, you're going to allow that left knee to fall down towards the left side of the mat. The right sole of the foot will come flat to the floor. Playing with the position of your foot, maybe you, again, bring it closer to the knee or inside, closer to the hip crease. Play with what's available to your body today. 
As we exhale into this twist, all you're doing is closing your eyes and turning your chin to the right. If this is too much or, or just not what you feel your body needs right now, you can feel free to take a different posture or simply uncross that right ankle and stack the right knee on top of left for a simple reclined spinal twist. Inhale, drawing that left knee, drawing first the head back to center, then drawing the left knee up to center, unwinding that right ankle, bringing the right sole of the foot to the mat as we cross left over right for the opposite side as we allow that left knee to open, that left hip to open. Exhale to bring the right knee over to the mat, the right side of the mat. Left foot comes flat and turning the chin towards the left. Inhale, unwind, the head comes back to center, that right knee comes back to the midline, I'm crossing the ankle, maybe bringing the knees in towards the chest on an exhale, giving yourself a hug, massaging the spine as you roll left to right, bringing the soles of the feet back to the mat behind the hips. Filling the breath, filling the lungs as we walk the feet out the length of the mat. Maybe flexing the ankle and stretching through the trunk before setting that right heel down. Same thing on the opposite side, flex through that left foot, reaching for the wall and setting that left ankle, left heel down. Maybe you reach up with the hands and cross the elbows across the front body to walk the shoulder blades. You're reaching around the back with the hands and walking the shoulder blades up and away from the mat. Gently releasing shoulder blades, the palms rest face up at your sides. Your chin releases gently toward the chest. Your ankles and toes melt to the sides, releasing tension from the ankles and knees and hips. Shavasana. You can stay where you are in your Shavasana. Or you can draw the knees in towards the chest <clears throat> and one more time, rolling to your favorite side, keeping the eyes closed. And pressing yourself up to a simple seated posture.
And if you're in your simple seated posture, inhale those fingertips all the way up above the head. Palms to touch as we exhale those hands through heart center. Coming back to our intention. Saying our own personal prayer. Thank you for coming to practice today with me. I pray blessings. I pray healing. I pray peace over each one of you as you move off of your mats and into your day, into your homes and families work and play. I pray that you would experience a peace and a calm that surpasses all understanding. A movement of freedom in your breath and body. and a closer relationship between your heart and the one of divine being of God. This is my prayer for you. I pray all these things for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for joining me today, guys. And uh, thanks for coming to Facebook Live Takeover for Canopy in the Roots. I am Holly. You can find me on Instagram as Boho Holly. And you can also find Canopy on, and the Roots Dahlonega on Instagram, as well as obviously here on Facebook. And tomorrow we have Claire, Claire Williams is super cool and she is bringing her strength and stretch flow to Canopy in the Roots' Facebook Live page tomorrow morning starting at 9.30. It's an hour long practice and a vinyasa. I think you will love Claire's personality. I've actually seen her teach a heavy metal yoga, which is so cool. So I think you'll really love her and, um, and just thank you so much for tuning in and taking to your mat this morning. I hope you feel refreshed and stretched and strengthened. And we'll meet again here next Friday morning. Um, go to our website to check our schedule and see who else is up on the docket. We have daily yoga on our Facebook Live here um, every day except Sundays. So Mondays we have Kelly. Um, and uh, Kelly is uh, doing a gentle yoga series. So if you're a beginner, Kelly's class is a great place to start. Her class is at noon on Mondays. And then we have Christ-centered yoga with me on Tuesday nights at six. We have Janessa with her soul reboot. And that is um, a 15 minute yoga flow every Wednesday morning. And it's really amazing because it's just a great way to start your day. And it's also a good place for you to start if you're a beginner at yoga too because it's 15 minutes and Janessa is just so cool. She has a spa in North Georgia called Bliss Mama and her fingers are magical with um, massage therapy. Um, we also have um, on Thursday mornings, we have um, with Colorado Yoga Connection, Kylie, who teaches also um, a vinyasa class. She is amazing and um, I think you guys will really enjoy her class. We also are offering a yoga nidra with this yoga superstar. She would not call herself that, but I'm calling her that. 
Um, her name is Jessica and she's with Tailored For You Yoga and she has this yoga nidra which is a guided meditation. She's a beautiful person as well. Fridays with me, Saturday mornings with Claire. Check out the schedule. Hope to see you guys there. We're going to post all of these yoga videos available for you on our YouTube channel as well as all of our live streaming music. Since we can't have audiences at the moment in our 50 seat listening room at Canopy, we are live streaming all of our performers. Some of them are coming from California, Utah, Nashville. Some of them are live streaming from their living rooms and some of them are actually coming to perform at the Roots. So we just feel incredibly thankful for all of you guys. This is our heart to serve and to provide new opportunities for you guys to not only practice yoga and connect with instructors and the practice of yoga in general, but um, also to bring you new artists, music, comedy, spoken word, poetry, um, and all of these things in the middle of this pandemic and this weird shelter in place thing that we none, none of us have ever experienced before. Here we are. And so I hope that there's something for everybody at Canopy. We are open. Our actual social house is open for patio and curbside service. We do um, fresh brewed Costa Rican coffee from Cafe Brit and um, baked goods from two local bakeries, as well as our yoga studio, Canopy in the Roots, and um, Dahlonega Yoga, and gosh, all the things. So thank you for coming. Thank you for listening to me talk. And um, thank you for joining me on your mat today. I can't wait to see you again. And I hope that you have enjoyed yourself and have a wonderful weekend. It's beautiful here in Georgia. Take care.